the blizzard we were preparing for hit us at full speed. Oh my gosh. But we love a good curveball. And that's the story of my marriage to Trent. Today is full of successful progress. This is a professional way to do this. We call it the beaver nibble. And holiday cheer. Merry Christmas! Not even a couple bumps in the road can dim our smiles. It exploded! Subscribe and come along today because this snow isn't stopping us. You okay, Frank? Yeah. <laughs> Go outside. Go potty. Well, Frank just noped out of this morning. We are waking up to a fair bit of snow. <laughs> hey. So this is basically an amazing storm that's happening right now. I don't know if you guys can see too well on the camera, but our railing out here, which is only about this wide, has like a vertical like 11 or 12 inches of snow on top of the railing. That's because like it's the lightest fluffiest powder that's just stacking up on the railing. We've gotten like probably well over a foot of snow throughout the night. And this means one thing. Yeah. We're gonna have to go skiing. Leo. Leo. We still have a lot of work to do, but Brandon is on his way up right now, which is going to be quite the trial for him. And we're heading out to the garage because we've got to put in a new man door. We've got to get the garage completely organized. And I really wanted to get a little bit more people's like uh, opinions. A lot of people were saying we should make a separate channel for the rock crawler or for the garage or the truck build and things like that. Let me know in the comments if you're for or against truck content on this video because I'd really like to take everybody's temperature and get everyone's opinion. So if you have an opinion of whether you care or you don't care or you hate it or you love it, let us know in the comments. I would really like to know. Also, look at that. Yes, it's on our dog kennel. Well, everybody's always like, when you have a toddler, they destroy the Christmas tree and you can't put ornaments down low. So we came up with the perfect solution. <laughs> We don't have to move the kennel, and we don't have to worry about ornaments at the bottom of the tree. Also, Leo's not happy this morning. You say? We need a snowmobile. You're obsessed. What if the truck has trouble? <laughs> oh Stop. yeah, that's the reason. We, we have to have a snowmobile for survival. <laughs> the snow could just never stop. I mean, we've talked about this ever since moving up here. Like, we should probably get a snowmobile. But like, what are the pros and cons? Like, what's the real reason? The real reason is it's for fun. But honestly, when you live up here and it snows as much as it does where we live, I feel like it's pretty justified. This is a package from Ellen. We'll just say Ellen D. I don't want to give away her last name. Uh, and I think it's from Australia. No way. Yeah, Australia. Oh, oh I think it's a Christmas present. Are we supposed to, to wait? To Leo, mom and dad too. Ellen, thank you. Have a happy Christmas. I'd love to send a bit more. I just can't. Have a wonderful Christmas. Oh my gosh, what is this? Oh. Look at the little faces. Let me see. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so cute. That is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Wow. Is that like for his knees? Yeah. He's crawling? Yeah. Might be a little bit big. Leo is the smallest baby on the planet, basically. So <laughs> that's perfect. Big is better. He'll these are gonna, you know, like the old time farmers when their overalls are like <laughs> hanging all over the place because they're like a skinny old farmer and their overalls are big. That's what Leo's gonna look like. Ellen, thank you. That's amazing. It's so wonderful when we get gifts from our followers. Um, Merry Christmas to you too. Thank you. And it's from Australia, which makes it that much cooler. I'm pretty sure. What are those? Koala bears? Yeah. It's cool. <laughs> All right, so this is the snow that Utah is known for. This is the greatest snow on earth. It is light, it is fluffy, it's amazing powder, the best you'll ever find for skiing. And wow. you can tell that it's extremely light and fluffy because when you come out here, not only can you just like kick all of the snow away, but like as snow has sloughed off the roof, where it's landed, 
it's blown all of the snow away where it's landed because it's just so light and so fluffy. It's great skiing snow. We'll get to shoveling these stairs later, but for now I'm just gonna do the shuffle. Ah, oh, it's so deep! <laughs> Your boots are like knee high, that's crazy. This is amazing. This feels like a fairyland, it feels fake. It feels like the snow you would imagine they make on a movie set. It's like so light and fluffy and sunny. It's gorgeous out here. curve on a cliff edge. I don't know who taught you how to drive in the snow, but it it's way you. better if you go fast. Yeah, it's way more fun. It's more fun to go sideways. <laughs> All right, I just wanna put a disclaimer out there, you guys, don't worry. We have done this many years now in a row, and we're both experienced driving in the snow even before we moved up on the mountain. We're always very safe. We know how to handle these snowy conditions in the car, and we would never take any risks, especially if Leo were in the car with us. So Trent does love to have fun, but we also always prioritize safety. fun it will be loaded by yourself and I sent him the order number and he's like what's the weight I said 54 pounds and a doorknob and he said that's insulting <laughs> basically one of my neighbors Cody is a good friend of ours and he is down at like Home Depot and he's like do you need anything while I'm down here I was like I do need this door from Home Depot because I can't put it in my bed with the bed cover but you said it like as a joke but I was like, yeah, I do need this door if you want to attempt to load it up. I was like, it's it's you know probably not gonna be super fun by yourself because even light doors by yourself, it's a door, so it's like not fun to try and load. Maybe he'll go pick it up for us, we'll see. Today we're basically gonna be cutting the hole in the garage for that door, and that will give us access to the man cave room. Okay. And since we have access to that, we can take the roof nest and the spare tire and like all this stuff that doesn't really need to be in the garage into like the man cave room because it's all framed in now. It's all basically dried in except for the door. Even though so there's we... a foot of snow on the ground. Oh, well that doesn't matter. It's like stuff that's meant to be outside. Yeah. So we can like take that stuff, put it in there. It can be out of the garage, clean the garage, organize it. It's gonna be a cool place. Brandon. Good morning. Hey. That was the canyon. <laughs> It was a mess. Really? Yeah. yeah. Going down too? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, both directions were kind of a joke. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Trent! Ah. We made it all the way back to our house without getting stuck, and now we are having some major problems getting into our driveway. These aren't major problems. We're having a little bit of difficulty getting into our driveway. Ah. Already up. Ah. Third time's the charm, okay. Our driveway is just steep, so if it's not plowed, you gotta get a running start. And when you're coming from the opposite direction, you can't get a running start. Pull through driveway, coming soon. Hopefully. I'm really glad we have a heater, keeping it at least tolerable in here. Not like super warm, but we're doing okay. We're basically laying out where this man door is gonna go. So there's gonna be a man door, just like that one, but it's gonna be a little bit further in. So we're kind of laying out on the wall where that's gonna be. Brandon is cutting some jack studs and some headers. And then we're basically gonna have to dissect our wall, throw one new king stud in, and then we'll have a door. And I think our neighbor Cody is gonna be bringing us the door. Wow. So he might show up with it, he might not. But either way, we're gonna have a giant hole in this wall. So almost ready to get to work. excited about this. Hello! How's it going over there? Good. It's nice and warm in here. <laughs> Is it? It's freaking igloo in here. You're like Wilson through the fence. And 
no puff. What a nightmare. Not ideal working conditions. Yeah, not now. Find the broom. Not only is it 10 degrees outside and actively snowing, but this place is a disaster and we are continuing to frame and build regardless of the weather. We have timelines to hit and there's nothing getting in our way. It's a little chilly and it's a little messy. Other than that, there's not much stopping us. We're good, we never left the ground. But we need to take some pain of a shoulder. We could come. Is Good girl. Over. Ready? Go. I wouldn't say this is going well or smoothly or quickly, but it is going. Uh, we're having a couple issues with hoses malfunctioning. It's your best bet right there. Plug it. <laughs> um, the walls not being like the right exact size or like the frame of the doorway being the exact size. Just like a couple little snags here and there. Nothing that can't be overcome. The biggest plus though is that Brandon took his coveralls off. Trent is down to a t-shirt. These guys are hot. So I'm freezing because I'm just kind of like handing them things, but they are nice and warm, which is, makes a huge difference when you're trying to get stuff done. Temperature's still climbing even though we got the door open. Just heating the outside. I mean, it went up one degree. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> that fits so perfectly, you'd think it was made for it. How's it feel up there? It feels really toasty. Really? Yeah. Our overhead storage will be nice and warm. Yeah, we won't be able to put any overhead storage in front of this thing. <laughs> unfortunately. These two say it takes seven minutes to install a door. Seven minutes, that's all it takes. That's exactly how long it took last time. Is it? <laughs> Seven and a half. Seven and a half, that's right. Woo! Beautiful. This is the professional way to do this. We call it the beaver nibble. Is that what we call it? Don't try it at home. <laughs> Awesome. Woo! Just think, when we were laying that bubble wrap, we didn't even know there was gonna be an extra building here. Wow, that's cool. While we're at Home Depot picking up this door, we're also gonna get a new air hose. Oh yeah. And then I'll be able to use the new air hose to shoot in that two by 12, get the rest of the nails put in that need to be put in. Cool. And then we'll install the door. And in. <laughs> Yee! Cool. It's like a barn door. There's one nail, it's fine. Change of plans. Our neighbor Cody is uh, on his way with the door right now. If you're watching this, Cody, we're, we're not doubting you. We weren't doubting you. I just wasn't sure if you were like fully committed. But you were, so thank you. While we wait for Cody, let the cleaning commence. He did it with one arm. Like, how insulting. <laughs> Cody is a lifesaver. Thank you so much, Cody, if you're watching this, for picking up this door while you were in town. It saved us a whole ride down and back up the mountain. Um, and in the time it took for him to like unload it with Trent, and then we chatted for a couple minutes, the door is already halfway installed. I think these guys are getting a little bit faster at this process. Hello. Look at this. Come on in. Oh, it's warm in here. Wow. All right, that one took about eight minutes. At least. A little bit longer than I was expecting, but it turned out beautifully. Look at that. You like it? Yeah. We gotta tape up the hole for the deadbolt, but other than that, you done. Nice. All right, well, we got the door installed. We got the gaps spray foamed, it's shimmed, it's screwed in. It's got a doorknob on it. If you're watching this, Cody, thank you very much for picking up that door. Made it really, really helpful on us. Like in the past couple of videos, we've just had like so many friends pulling through and helping Seriously? us out with stuff when yeah. we needed it. So it's amazing. Now that that's done, we're back to retaining 
the majority of the heat that the <laughs> heater is putting out. And I think we might try and install our lights. We have like hanging lights cool. that we can temporarily install with a couple light switches so that, you know, at 4 p.m. when the sun goes down, we yeah. can have light in here. So I guess let's move the rest of these boxes and get working on the lights. Is it gonna take to have light in here? I don't know. Probably a day. Okay. I asked Cody's wife what Cody would like as a thank you for, uh, like, if we could bake him something to say thank you for bringing up the door. And she texted back jokingly. He says that he would like a three tiered chocolate cake with buttercream frosting and handmade roses. But they don't know me very well yet. So they think that I will just be like, ha, that's funny. Um, but I'm gonna go inside and make that right now, okay? <laughs> Luck. Okay, you good luck. Don't electrocute yourself. Be careful. Thank I'll make sure. You okay, thank you. Okay. The cakes are in the oven, so we'll check back on the cakes in a few minutes. And in the meantime, I think these guys are getting very excited about bringing some light into the garage. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Inside. Ooh, it's warm. Whoa. Look at that. Dang, it looks like a shop. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Frank to hang out with them. I know, Frank, you won't even be cold in here. Frank has become very particular of temperature in his later years and just really enjoys snuggling up on the couch. But now that it's warm and we're gonna bring a couch in here, he'll be able to hang out with us. Yeah. Hi, Rika. Oh, yes. If you're an electrician and you're watching this, yes, I know these have to be in conduit. Yes, I'm gonna put them in conduit. I'm not gonna do it today. I'm just trying to get light. And these are temporary. Also, this is supposed to be a three-way switch. I got 14.2 and ran from one switch to the other. It wasn't until we were about almost done running the wires that I realized, oh, I need 14.3 for this. <laughs> and so I eliminated one of the switches. Okay. But I'm just. It's whatever. Flying about the seat of my pants. <laughs> the best I can. If you're an electrician and you don't like the way that I'm doing this, I do love to read your comments. Like just the other day when we were framing the wall over here. There's so many comments of people being like, well, at least you guys are creative. Or like, I think it's so funny the way you guys are framing that wall. I think it's funny too, but it's also, you know, I'm just trying to do things the best way I know how, or the best way that I can think, because most of the time I don't know how, so I'm just kind of making it up as I go. And that's the story of my marriage to Trent. <laughs> Operation Temporary Light Fixtures is getting pretty close to being done. I still got to hook the breaker up in the panel. Cool. And it looks really janky, but guess what? It's gonna work. It also good. looks really dark in here, it's so. Good to, yeah, <sighs> telling me. Would you like a frozen gummy worm? No, thank you. <laughs> it's all you. <laughs> We're so good. Do you have bags for every trade now? I'm trying. I'm trying to, trying to gather a bag for every trade. <laughs> I feel like it makes me do a better job if I have the proper tools. Probably a reasonable any, theory. Any excuse to buy some new tools really. <laughs> it exploded! Hmm. Well, obviously that did not go as planned. Baking at 8,000 feet elevation is extremely, extremely different and I'm still getting used to how to adjust for high altitude baking and cooking. It has to do with the rising agent and how quickly things rise in an oven at higher altitude and high elevation. So like how much baking soda and baking powder needs to be adjusted. Obviously that exploded. So embarrassing, yes. Humiliating, yes, but not a reason to not try again. Uh, and now I'm just honestly even more curious because that recipe is pretty simple recipe and it didn't work at all. So. After we finish getting lights, we're gonna have attempt number two on the cake. <laughs> I hope it's going better in here than it is in there. Mess it up. I didn't mess it up. We live at 8,000 feet. Everything gets messed up, no matter what I do, no matter how much I try to control it. They literally exploded. I've had that. 
It was like your souffles, yeah. I mean, we could still slap together three layers of explosions. <laughs> Here you go, Cody. It <laughs> still tastes good. Yeah, All it right. does taste good. Uh, are you ready? Should be pretty anticlimactic. Uh, uneventful. Good, good. <laughs> All right, let's see. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's going just as bad out here as, as it is in there. Come on, man. It's just one of those days. All right, back to the drawing board. <laughs> you and me both. You feel like summer days to me, warm, tender, sunny rays. I hope that we are meant to be. You say nothing at all. Yeah. We only have enough ingredients and time in the day to try this one more time. So if this doesn't work, then I'm sorry, Cody, we will buy you a cake. And we still really appreciate you bringing that door up. I'm frustrated though, because every time I try to bake at high altitude, like things go wrong. And I have all these recipes that I love baking and I love baking for other people. And every time I try to make them at this elevation, 8,000 feet is significantly different than baking at sea level, or even 3,000 feet, or even 5,000 feet, which is what Salt Lake City is. So I'm still fine tuning all the different adjustments that need to be made for every different type of recipe. Like cake is different than bread, is different than pastry. You know, they're just all so different and they all require different adjustments for high altitude. So we'll see what happens. At least we've tried. In the meantime, it does smell very good. We watch a lot of the Great British Baking Show and I always love how they like put their stuff into the oven and then they sit in front of the oven just like watching it rise, which is ridiculous because like nobody does that in real life, but that's exactly how I feel right now. It's like, I just wanna watch and make sure these little cakes turn out perfectly and I wanna monitor them and give them all the positive rising happy vibes. Don't touch it, okay? We're just gonna watch. We're just gonna sit here and watch, Leo. Can you put that back in here? Can you put it back in? <laughs> oh, they can go in an empty dog bowl. Yeah. Here. In. Yay! Hello. Seven degrees outside. I thought you were looking at cake number one. <laughs> that doesn't look very good. No, it tastes good though. Good. <laughs> it's late, I'm tired, it's cold, even with the heater pumping as hard as it can when it's competing with seven degrees. Yeah. It's like, and no can't insulation. Even, can't even get up to 60. Plastic yeah. on the doors, it's like but not even- the heater anything. literally didn't stop all day. Yeah, no. It ran from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's crazy. Never even made it to 60. We did have the door open for a lot of that. But yeah, at least we have one more door in though. We got a door put in and the lights are on. That's it. actually huge. We need more than two lights. <laughs> But the lights are on. <laughs> we see you, buddy. Anyway, we got a big adventure planned for tomorrow, so we'll see you guys then. You didn't think we were gonna let you guys go without showing you the end results of this cake. We have about two minutes left on the timer. Give me one second. All right, so we made some dinner. We had some delicious pasta. I made a garlic cream sauce from scratch, which there's some of the sauce left over, but Allie is over here extremely determined to nail this three-layered chocolate cake with buttercream frosting and roses. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know what happened, but now I feel like I have to cover the whole thing in these like petal things. It's the wrong tip. It's just like, I don't have enough frosting. It was a little bit sunk in the middle, so I was just like, I'll just fill it in with some flowers. But then the hole was too big, so then like the flowers were this like weird blob, and <laughs> now it just looks so ridiculous. I mean, it looks okay. It, I don't know what it's supposed to look like, it but looks it looks like a fine. Venus flytrap or something. <laughs> I don't know how to save this. I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of frosting. I don't know what else to do. <laughs> and then we're gonna go deliver this to Cody. <laughs> and hopefully he likes it. One good thing about it being single digits overnight and maybe in the teens during the day yesterday, is that nothing had a chance to melt, which means nothing had a chance to freeze. So there's no ice 
on the stairs or anything like that. There's some packed powder that's a little bit harder to shovel, but I'm really glad nothing froze because these stairs would be an absolute nightmare if there was ice under here. Anyway, today Allie and I are going on a little bit of an adventure. She's finishing up with some editing right now, and then we're actually taking the day off, which is something that we never really do. And by taking the day off, I mean doing our normal activities because we're still taking you guys with us. So some of you may already know that in Utah, the license plates say greatest snow on earth. Now that is a phrase that has been coined years and years ago. And the reason that they say the greatest snow on earth is because of this. That, this, this powder that's fallen here in the past couple days is the lightest, fluffiest, driest snow you can ever imagine. And when you ski or you snowboard on this type of powder, it's about as close as you can get to flying without leaving the ground. And needless to say, over the past few years, Utah has not really gotten that much snow. All through the season, we've kind of gotten gypped. Now here we are, basically beginning of December, end of November, getting really, really good snow and a lot of it. A lot of the ski resorts right now have a bigger base than they had all year last year. So Allie and I are heading to the ski resort. We're gonna test out this snow. Good morning guys. It is a mom and dad's day out. We never do this and the snow has forced our hand. We have no choice. So we haven't been out uh, skiing in a very long time. Last season I think I only went twice because I had just had a baby. So I'm not anticipating that we will do well. Actually Trent's already a professional. I'm gonna have a great day no matter what. Even if I suck at skiing, I'm just like happy to be out on the mountain. So I'm very, very excited. In case you all were wondering, last night's cake turned out chef's kiss. I actually didn't taste it because we brought it over to Cody and his family, um, but they texted that it was amazing. They were so excited and so surprised. They definitely did not think I was gonna actually make a cake, but especially after that first disaster, I had like a lot of renewed motivation to get it right the second time. So. Um, baking at altitude is just an ongoing process. If any of you have tips on how to bake better at high elevation, I would love to hear them because that's always something we're both working on. Um, but at least yesterday, it went well, the cake was great, and today's gonna be a fun day. heading our way up Big Cottonwood Canyon. We're heading to Solitude Resort today. I've only been here actually one time in my life. Oh. I've always gone to other resorts, but Solitude's really nice, and the pass that I have is unlimited to Solitude. So we are gonna go to Solitude. We're gonna get some fresh pow. We're gonna get some nice runs in. I'm really excited. It's almost basically a workout to like get all of your gear on. And like by the time you have your gear on, you're like, hot and sweaty from like struggling to put it all on. All right, I guess we're ready. Everybody's already up to the very top of the mountain, or it's gonna be a nice light day. Fresh towel! Yeah. Fresh towel! It's everywhere. Well, we've been down a few runs. I'm sorry we didn't bring the camera with us, but we're just like getting our feet under us. It's our first time out this season. We need a little bit of warm up time. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. I still suck at skiing, that hasn't changed, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun to be out here and just hanging out with my love, so all is good. To be honest, I'm not gonna front. I'm also not very good at skiing. So it's very difficult for me to like grab the camera and try to like film while I'm skiing or film us skiing or doing anything. So I'm gonna do my best to try and get you guys out and let you see some fresh powder, maybe like some cool runs, but it's it's a little intimidating because I don't want to crash and put myself out of commission, you know? Seriously, we need you. Anyway, it's a beautiful day out here. It couldn't be any nicer. Beautiful day out here. 
Hoover Day with fresh snow from like 24 hours ago. Amazing. We've been at it for a little while now. I think uh, Allie and I are gonna go get some chili or like something from the concessions, have a nice little lunch, something warm. What do you say? Okay, I'm warmed up. I feel good now. This is fun. I'm having a good time. <laughs> start decorating for Christmas. Mommy already decorated pretty much the whole house, but we're gonna decorate the tree. <laughs> He's not amused. Skiing was an absolute blast. We had a really nice day, just Trent and I. We actually invited a bunch of friends and all of them had like reasons why they couldn't go, so it ended up being a really unexpectedly fun date day between Trent and I. We got some food, we did some skiing, we made it back to the house, and tonight we are decorating this gorgeous tree right here. I'm very excited. It might not be the bushiest, thickest, fullest tree in town, but it's pretty even and I think it's gonna decorate quite nice. The only problem is that all the branches are really long, mm -hmm. which means it won't be able to handle like the heavy ornaments. I love that your standards for both size and quality of the tree have just diminished year after year after year. You're just like, whatever, any tree, just put it up, I don't care. I'm happy with whatever. I'm, I'm over trying to get the big bushy trees. The bin right. of secret treasure. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Christmas tree decorating hat. <laughs> Good. They're very, oh, we had this problem last year. What? They're very like fluorescent. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, we, we have so many ornaments that a lot of our followers have sent to us and like 90% of them were during 2020. I love it. And some of them are so freaking cute. Like our house isn't green, but during our first Christmas, our house was green because it was just the zip sheathing. So like this has a picture of our greenhouse. I actually liked it better when it was green. All right, looks like Christmas in here, baby. Do you like it? Is it done? What do you think? I think it's done. Also, on the video, it has like some weird strobing effects, but oh, really? that doesn't happen in real life. I think we're ready for the star. Yeah, I guess the only thing left to do is get the star up on top of there. Uh. <laughs> it's perfect. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> All right, I'm excited. Christmas. Well, we've got everything decorated now. Just like last year, our lights that are on the tree are a different color from the lights on our garland. And it doesn't matter what we do, all the lights are a different color. The lights that we have on the railing that I still need to diagnose, that I've been trying to diagnose for the past like two or three weeks, Years. also a different color. <laughs> Years. It's okay. I'll get it figured out like probably a week before Christmas. It's a work in progress. <laughs> Anyway, we are really feeling the Christmas spirit here in our house. And we just wanted to tell you guys all, if you're celebrating Christmas, that we wanted to wish you a happy Merry Christmas and a happy holidays, whatever you guys are doing. Hopefully you're with family or friends or people that you love. And we just uh, want to let you guys know that we appreciate you. Seriously, thank you so much, you guys. We love you. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.